In this video, we will be going over the procedures for patching and painting walls in the Sam Fox School. When hanging or installing work, you're going to need to put holes in the walls. This is expected. When finished though, you will need to make sure to take time to paint and patch and return the wall to the way you found it. For your convenience, we've created several painting carts that live in and around the Sam Fox School. On these carts, you should find all of the tools, equipment, and materials you need to effectively do your work. However, many people use these carts, and if you can't find it and or the tools and equipment you need, go ahead and ask a shop technician or a shop monitor, and one should be able to help you. An important note, not all of the same paints are used on the same walls across the Sam Fox campus. Make sure you get confirmation before you begin. Begin with laying down a drop cloth. This will both protect the floor and will help with cleanup when finished. Begin the repair process by scraping away or pushing in the areas that protrude. Oftentimes, when you take a screw or nail out of the wall, the area will push out a little, and by simply taking the back end of your paint scraper or a screwdriver, you can push that area in prior to filling it with spackle or joint compound. Here, a pink wall spackle is being applied with a putty knife. This spackle will dry white to indicate when it is ready to be sanded or painted. The wall spackle is applied thoroughly in several directions to ensure that it completely covers the area being repaired. While it doesn't have the nifty color indicator, we also have joint compound in the shops that can be used to patch walls. When the wall compound or spackle is ready to be sanded, wrap a piece of sandpaper around a wood block to ensure you have a nice flat surface. If after sanding, the area you're working on is concave or dips in, no longer flush with the wall surface, reapply putty and repeat. Alternatively, you could use a damp sponge to wipe away this area. It creates a lot less dust and is an easier cleanup. When you're finished sanding, carefully pull the tarp back so not to disturb the dust and particulates. Fold the tarp in on itself, take it outside to the dumpster and carefully empty it. You can then fold the tarp back up and return it to the paint cart. You can clean up all residual dust by gently sweeping and or using a vacuum from one of our shops. No matter whether you're mixing one gallon of paint or a five gallon of paint, you'll want to make sure to take the time to mix the contents thoroughly. You'll want to have a paint key to open the lid, a small container to pour in the contents of paint that you'll be using, and a brush to clean up the edges and sides of the paint after you pour it into the container. If we use a hammer or something heavy to bang on the lid to close it, we'll end up splattering paint on our clothing and the areas around us. So instead, we can use something like a scrap piece of wood to gently and evenly apply pressure on the lid to attach it to the can. Try to avoid dipping the brush all the way in the paint. You don't want to overload it, and you really just want to have the paint on that top half. 
In time from using it, it will slowly work its way down to the heel of the brush. When using five gallon buckets of paint, there are two ways to get the paint out. The first is to use one of these large plastic paint keys to slowly work the edges back around the lid. After you open it up, you'll want to have a large stir stick to mix the contents. Notice how a brush is being used to clean the stir stick and put back any residual paint. Be careful not to overfill the paint tray. You can always add more if you need it, but if there's too much, it can be difficult to work with. If you know the paint inside of the bucket is well mixed, the second way you could get paint out is to simply pull this small tab lid from the main lid and pour from that hole. You'll still wanna have a brush to clean up the excess paint and to avoid any drips. Once your paint tray is filled, you'll need to get a rolling frame and pad to put on it. Notice with the rolling pad that it is being rolled on the back end of the tray so that it's not completely submerged into the paint. Just like the paint brushes, you want to avoid overloading the pad. Because the action of rolling will create an off spray, we want to be sure to put down a tarp or ground cover to protect the floor. Slow, firm, and consistent movements up and down and slightly overlapping are going to give you the most even and best coverage. If you need to step away or take a break, be sure to wrap your rolling pad and brush with a plastic bag so that it won't dry out and you can continue to use it. For cleanup, start by using your brush to return all of the paint you are using from the small bucket and or the paint tray back to its original container. There is no need to wash the paint trays or the buckets that you are using to hold paint. They can simply air dry. After they've air dried, they're ready to be used again. Unless a rolling pad or paintbrush is on its last leg, you will need to wash them so that they can be used again. Most of our shops and carts have trisodium phosphate, or TSP, a simple soluble salt cleaning solution that can be bought at most any hardware store. While this is not required to wash brushes, it can cut the time down significantly. Begin by sprinkling a little bit of TSP onto the brush and roller. Add a little bit of water and massage it in with your fingers. After working it in for a minute or two, rinse the brush and roller underneath the water and see if there's any residual paint still coming from it. If there is, Sprinkle more TSP on and repeat. In the end, be sure to leave the cart, tools, and space cleaner than how you found them. This includes the sink that you are working in. You can see here there's a lot of residual buildup from cleaning. Take time to wipe that down and leave it nice for the next person. Happy painting and patching.